Hello everybody, welcome to Mike's Mike. My name is Mike. For today's compliment, um, you have nice ears. <laughs> I know you're all just sitting there like, uh-huh, thank you. Hey, Jesse. So I wanted to start a series where I talk about years in my life, because there were years in my life because I am alive. Years in my life where there were key moments for pop culture in terms of music, movies, and TV, where I can just pinpoint that I'm like, wow, the 2009 VMAs, you know? Does that make any sense at all? And what better time to talk about past fantastic music, movies, and TV than with Miss Rona just delaying everything. Looking at you, Christopher Nolan. I also wanted to say that with everything that's happening in America and around the world at the moment, as white people and as allies, we need to be making sure that we're not ignorant, we're not passive, and we're using our platform and privilege to listen to and amplify the voices of black people. So with that in mind, I've linked in the description some resources that you can use to be informed, petitions, and different places that you can donate. So when talking about 2009, why am I doing this on camera? Ew. First of all, this is what I looked like in 2009. Mm-hmm. Mm. I was in year nine, which means I was 13. I was a whole teenager. On TikTok, I'm seeing all these mega famous people that are like 13 to 16 years old. And I'm like, that's what I looked like at that age. <laughs> so in 2009, it had been about a year since someone threw a meat pie at me, which for some reason is pivotal in my life now. And it's one of the few moments that I can actually pinpoint from high school. The guy who had the locker above me lit his locker on fire. That was a moment. I got runner up ducks again for the second time in a row to two different people. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Enough about my personal life yet. Yeah? Let's talk about some of the moments from the pop culture sphere in 2009 that make it one of the years that I would love to revisit if I was a time traveler. But I mean, that being said, can you prove that I haven't already been to 2009 twice? No. A profound silence has entered the chat. If I've missed something that you think is crucial to 2009 pop culture history, then feel free to put it in the comments. Pop music in 2009 was just absolute chef's kiss. That's like Ratatouille food critic, five stars. Talented, brilliant. We're talking Beyonce, we're talking Black Eyed Peas chart domination, Taylor Swift, Lady Gaga's debut essentially. Wow, wow, wow. I thought we could take a look at the Billboard Hot 100 and Billboard 200 charts from 2009. So the difference between those is the Hot 100 is singles. So they determine what charts based on radio play, downloads and streams. I don't think streaming was that big in 2009, so it's mainly purchases. And then the Billboard 200 is the 200 top albums in terms of purchases. Excuse the laptop reflection in my glasses. I have to wear these because it's mega migraine season. And if I don't wear them when looking at a computer screen, I will literally combust. A couple of mentions from the albums chart. So we had Taylor Swift's Fearless album, which was I think number one for 10 weeks, nine or 10 weeks. And there was a gap in the middle where it kind of fell and then came back. So she really said longevity. And then in December of 2009, we had Scottish legend, Susan Boyle. She popped up on the scene and no one was ready for Susan album party. Now for the singles chart. This is really interesting to me. This is really interesting to me, yeah? Because there's really not that many songs that charted at number one that year. Like you can see here, we had Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Kelly Clarkson, and then the Black Eyed Peas just dominated the charts for about six months. So Boom Boom Power was essentially the song of the year, the biggest song of 2009. And that song, you sold 2000 and late. my year nine self ate that up. Gonna get, 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 boom, boom, boom. Fun fact. So the album that Boom Boom Power was on also had I Got A Feeling and I'm A B. And I'm A B is, that song to me. You know, that song that if you drink coffee, it's what you think of. I just think of I'm a Beat and it's also on my breakdown playlist. It's just a banger, essentially. It's also the first music video that I bought on my iPod. I vaguely remember it's like a washing machine that comes to life transformer style in a garbage tip. And I just remember being so blown away. I was like, 
The budget is so high in this music video. This is like Transformers 5. We also had Party in the USA, Hot and Cold, What You Say. Well, because you did, what you say, what you say, what you say, what, 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 what did you say? Choo, 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 choo. Mm. Oh my God, we also had Fire City by Our Eyes that year. Fire City by Our Eyes. You would not believe your eyes. The migraine said, enough of that, yeah, stop that nonsense. In terms of the main pop girls, we had Lady Gaga releasing The Fame in 2008, which meant that the singles were charting in 2009, and that's when they would win all the awards because that's how the award season works. And in 2009, she wrote the Fame Monster EP, which I think was eight extra songs, which is essentially a deluxe version of the Fame. And she wrote that while touring as the opener for the Pussycat Dolls Doll Domination Tour. That's all up here. I didn't even have to research that. So technically the singles that were recorded by Lady Gaga in 2009 were Telephone, Alejandro, and Bad Romance. Technically, Telephone was released as a signal in 2010. Signal? Single. If I do a video about 2010, that's where Telephone would fit in. I remember Bad Romance was one of those music videos where it's just so career defining and it was such a moment in pop culture. And when the video got released, I just remember everyone being like, what is this? In, I think either November or December of 2008, Britney released Circus and that album had If You Seek Amy, Womanizer, and Radar, I think, as signals. See, why do I keep saying signals? And also, Radar was an interesting one because it was on Blackout, but it was also on Circus. I remember when If You Seek Amy came out and the radio presenters were just so unsure about the song, or they were faking that they were so unsure, and then they realized after they'd played the song for the first time, they were like, oh, she's spelling out a swear word. And my little 13 year old self hate that up. I was living. Britney also released a compilation album, which I think it was like her second best hits album, not her second best hits. Her second space, new sentence, not really. New word, not really. Anyway, that album had a new release and that was three and that went number one. Beyonce, Beyonce also had a big year. So she released I Am Sasha Fierce at the end of 2008. So you might've noticed that they're releasing albums at the end of 2008 because that's how the awards cycle works. So they are putting up singles for nominations in the Grammys and the VMAs and all that kind of stuff. She actually released Single Ladies as a signal. Oh my God. Single in 2008. But then in 2009, she had Diva, Halo, and Sweet Dreams, which are all bangers. I spent a lot of time talking about music because that's just what I love the most. But in terms of movies, the biggest movie of 2009 was Avatar. And I'm sorry to say it, but I hated that movie. Sorry to that movie. The way James Cameron clowned us all. There's a bunch that I haven't seen, like Inglorious Bastards and 500 Days of Summer. Um, oh my God, Knowing? Oh, I was so scared after I saw that. I vaguely remember something to do with numbers or predicting the future and then aliens or like a final destination type of just, I think it was Nicolas Cage that scared me, to be honest. In the animation categories, we had Up, that fucking movie, that married life scene, bitch was crying. I was b -b 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 bawling in the cinema. I remember like, the music and the animation, they just, they did a number on me that time. For the franchise girlies, we had Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince and also Twilight New Moon. So they were eating. Night at the Museum, Lovely Bones, 17 again. The Ice Age movie, which was the one before Nicki Minaj. She's a mammoth, of course. That's how I tell the Ice Age timeline. It's either before Nicki Minaj or after Nicki Minaj. Jennifer's Body, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Race to fucking Witch Mountain, and the Hannah Montana movie. I'm not gonna go through every single winner at the Oscars in 2009, but some notable mentions were Slumdog Millionaire won Best Picture, Heath Ledger won a posthumous, is that how you say it? Posthumous Best Supporting Actor for Dark Knight, which is a great movie. Christopher Nolan, if you're watching this, can you release Tenet on July 17, please? I need it. Now for TV, 2009 was the year that Glee started. Ooh, that dress of Imagine being in alternate universe 2711X 3YB, where Glee never aired, right? Bliss. Actually, you know what? No. I think Glee had such an impact on pop culture that perhaps Mr. Schuster was a necessary evil. I also scoured the Billboard 100 charts and found that in 2009, the Glee cast had 25 entries 
out of their, I don't know, some crazy like 207 or something, which was such a large number that it only recently was overtaken by Drake or something insane like that. And their highest one was Don't Start Believing, which got to number four. Don't start believing. Don't start believing, just give up. Also, I've said this before and I maintain my stance on this, that Mercedes and Santana deserved more solos. They had the range, they had the presence. What gives Mr. Shu? Other shows that debuted in 2009, we had Bond Family, Parks and Rec, Community, Vampire Diaries, Vampire Diaries. When they brought out that like ancient twin shit, I was done. We also had Sunny with a Chance, Jonas and Jersey Shore, which I think I just, I just love how I put Jonas and Jersey Shore next to each other like they're somehow related. All right, so for the pop culture moments category, we need to talk about the VMAs. So the VMAs, the Video Music Awards, there was so much drama that year. And it all is kind of represented by, if I say Kanye West or Taylor Swift, you can't look at either of their histories without looking at how they interacted at the VMAs in 2009. I'm really happy for you. I'm let you finish. So Taylor was accepting her award for best female video and Kanye got on stage, interrupted Taylor Swift and said that he thought Beyonce had the most iconic video of all time. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. The thing that really confuses me about the VMAs is so Taylor Swift won for best female video and then later on Beyonce won for video of the year but if Beyonce won video of the year shouldn't she also win best female video like and similarly that year Britney Spears was nominated for womanizer for video of the year but not for best female video it just doth not make no sense no dollars no cents Nothing in the bank account. When Beyonce was given the award for video of the year, she actually brought Taylor Swift on stage to finish the rest of her speech, which is so, like that is such a superstar thing to do. Beyonce is such a powerhouse. Like she has the singing, she has the dancing, she has the acting, and she's a nice person. Like. Also, at the VMAs in 2009, we were potentially my favourite live performance ever, which was Lady Gaga performing Paparazzi. Two key things for this are the talking at the start. That is the version of Paparazzi that I choose to believe was the single release. I pray the fame won't take my life. And the other thing is, I think she was 23 when she did that performance. So I'm 24. Lady Gaga was one year younger than me and did that. Like, I feel so unaccomplished and boring. I've also noted that 2009 is the year that Michael Jackson died. Now, for me personally, there's two celebrity deaths that really stand out to me. And I can remember kind of where I was when I found out that person died. And that was Steve Irwin and Michael Jackson. But now every single time I look at a picture of Michael Jackson or I read about Michael Jackson, all I can think of is Nikki's lyrics from the Flawless Remix with Beyonce, where she says, like, MJ Doctor, they are killing me, Probafol, I know they hope I fall. And that's how I learnt how Michael Jackson died on Probafol. The last thing that I've highlighted is the Tiger Woods cheating scandal was apparently in 2009. And for some reason, that was a pivotal moment for me. Much like the meat pie, apparently learning that Tiger Woods had slept with lots of different women was crucial to my upbringing. I was a fresh 13 year old getting so invested in his personal life. And for what? I was going to talk a little bit about reality TV, but my brain literally feels like it's going to explode. <laughs> Can you see, how, how would you see my headache? Can you see my headache though? Cause it's there. So yes, I am going to wrap this video up. How is my hair that color? Nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like. If you got something to say, leave a comment. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for 300,000 subscribers. Yeah, that happened. Wow, I appreciate y'all for watching my videos and hitting subscribe, yeah? I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you all soon. Peace out, bye! It's Christmas, let's go home. Welcome to the end screen. Here you will find another video for you to watch and a link to easily subscribe to my channel. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. <laughs>